You think you know them, and then they do something completely wild. <laughs> Believe it or not, our moggies share 96% of their genes with a tiger. Along with traits from every fantastic feline in the cat family. So why did one of the world's deadliest predators swap wilderness for suburbia? And how much of the wild is still left in them? This series explores cats like never before, tracing their epic journey from apex hunter to living room lounger. This time, we compare your moggy to wild cats. Come on. Getting closer than ever to their big, dangerous cousins. Lions can catch you unawares, which is often has happened, and I've, you know, been hammered to the ground and I've got whiplash. We discover the incredible abilities that all cats share and that keep our tabbies wild at heart. Sometimes you think they're more like monkeys than cats. <laughs> Cats have a story to tell, and it's wilder than you could ever imagine. A recent study discovered our cats have similar personalities to African lions. They have a surprising amount in common. Including a killer instinct. If they were bigger, your feline companion would probably try to eat you. Just like a lion. Or would they? If it is true, a man in South Africa is risking his life every day. When I started working with lions, I, I, I had the same idea as most people out there. Um, big, dangerous cat. Man-eater. You read the storybooks and you see movies and documentaries and they're always portrayed to be these ferocious, crazy, you know, killing machines. And then you get to meet your first lions and you go like, wait a minute, that's not what they're about at all. They're actually super friendly, super nice. Yes, can they be aggressive? Of course they can. But that's not the first thing that comes to mind when I think about lions. I think about lions more as, you know, socially um, dependent and loving and, and affectionate. Go, 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 go. Kevin Richardson is known as the Lion Whisperer. He runs a sanctuary for rescued big cats. What was that big boy? It's estimated that lions attack 700 people every year. But Kevin believes he has a loving bond with them. Most people will see me interact with a lion like this and say, you're completely insane. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. After two decades working in lion conservation, Kevin thinks his feline communication skills have kept him safe. Lions are giving off communication um, all the time. Anatomically, you just need to sit and look at a lion for long enough and know a little bit about the behavior and be tuned in. Because I notice with a lot of people, they, they come up to an animal and I can see immediately this lion's starting to get irritated. 
And it's the little telltale signs. The tail starts to just do a little twitch. Just a rhythmic twitch at the end. Nothing major. Or the ears go back a bit. Or you see them bristle. Or you see them yawn. Going, look at my teeth. Uh, you starting to come into my space. I don't want you there. Just little subtleties. People over the top of their head. They don't even know, oh, look, the lion's talking to me or, it's, or it loves me or whatever. And I'm like, no, that lion doesn't love you. You're actually irritating it because you're in its space. Lions are always, always giving off signs. You might not realize it, but your cat also uses its body language to communicate like a lion. They have fewer facial muscles than humans or dogs, which is why they sometimes look emotionless. Posture, ears, head and tail are their way of talking. Tail up means a cat is happy and approachable. But unlike a dog, wagging is a sign they are agitated. Eye contact is also very important to cats. Gazing into their eyes might be your way of showing love. But to them, it's a sign of aggression. Slowly blinking will prove you are not a threat, reassuring them to trust you. A lot of what your cat does comes from their wild relatives. They are the latest addition to the cat family after 10 million years of evolution. So they've inherited everything from their bigger, wilder cousins. A great example of this is their love of acrobatics. An ability that has its roots in Southeast Asia. This was the birthplace of all cats. It was hot and humid with trees up to 100 meters high. The best way to look for food and survey territory was to climb. evolved to leap and swing through trees, reaching up to 40 miles per hour. Quick enough to hunt birds and monkeys. One cat still lives in the treetops, just like their ancestors used to. This is the clouded leopard. They are so rare, nobody knows how many are left in the wild. Good girl. Oh, bye. Bill Wood studies clouded leopards in Thailand at a specialist breeding center. It's one of the only places in the world to see these elusive cats. Go on, get up, go on. Cloudy leopards are incredibly rare. Um, very little is known about them in the wild. That beautiful pattern that you can see on the cats um, is what gives rise to the name clouded leopard. Those shapes that you can see on the side that work incredibly well for camouflage in the jungles and forests where they live um, resembles cloud shapes, so hence the name. They just blend into the background, disappear into the forest. 
the advantage for the cat is it means that they can jump out the foliage and dive on the prey or whatever without being seen. So a good adaptation to forest life and hunting. Clouded leopard tails are often longer than their bodies, so they can balance like a tightrope walker. It's one of the reasons they seem to defy gravity. They've got short legs, so they've got a low center of gravity close to the branch. They've got incredibly long tails for balance. The speed they move through the branches, sometimes you think they're more like monkeys than cats. Our cats also have some of these amazing adaptations for climbing. They share hooked claws, up to five centimeters long, that can grip most surfaces. Their paws sense vibrations to check the route is safe. They are also one of the only mammals born without a fear of heights. But at the top, our moggies are at a disadvantage to their tree climbing cousins. Front facing paws mean they can't climb down easily, which is why thousands of our pets get stuck up trees every year. Clouded leopards can rotate their ankles to come down head first. If they're not too high, a domestic cat's best option is to take a leap of faith. All cats have inherited some of the clouded leopard's climbing abilities. But how do they learn these death-defying skills? In Southeast Asia, clouded leopard cubs are figuring out how to climb. They're three months old and will spend almost every waking minute playing. This is how your cat learns as well. They also get the hang of things by observation and repetition. When young cats play, chemicals are released in their brains, making them feel happy, encouraging them to keep playing and learning. Clouded leopard cubs have an extra adaptation to help their training. They have camouflage, dark spots that match the dappled light in the jungle, which in theory helps them blend in. still have a lot to learn. Adult cats use camouflage for a much more serious game. Hunting. Their colouring and markings keep them hidden 
so they can stalk prey until they are close enough to pounce. Animals rarely see them until it's too late. Kevin Richardson knows only too well how close big cats can get before you realize they're there. Lions blend in so well to long grass, he often gets caught out by the 130 kilogram cats. Unfortunately for Kevin, hiding and pouncing is one of their favorite pastimes. They can catch you unawares, which is often has happened, and I've, you know, been hammered to the ground and I've got whiplash. You know, the next day I can't move my neck and I'm stuff everywhere, and that happens often with one particular lioness. <laughs> It's like her kick. You can see her rolling on the floor on her back laughing that she's got me yet again. <laughs> Fortunately, over the years with me, I've never had an injury that's taken me to hospital. But yes, I do get little bites and nicks and scratches because accidents do happen. Staying hidden is a big part of being a cat. Believe it or not, every cat has camouflage that's designed for specific hunting styles and terrains, including domestic cats. Lighter, solid-colored cats prefer to hunt in grass, moving slowly to blend in. Whereas spotted cats are forest predators often hunting at dawn and dusk. One cat in Africa is an exception to these rules. Cheetahs have black spots, which should mean they hunt in forests at dawn and dusk. But they often prefer hunting in the savanna in the middle of the day. Experts think they switch to being daytime hunters to avoid competition. For some reason, their spots haven't changed. But they do have other markings specially designed for their hunting style. Cheetahs sprint to catch prey, running up to 70 miles per hour. Our cats have inherited some of their speedy abilities. They share long muscles and flexible spines to maximize each stride. These adaptations mean our cats can reach up to 30 miles per hour, faster than Usain Bolt. But all cats lack stamina and tire in seconds. Which is where the cheetah's extra markings come into their own. The black lines on their face reflect glare and are thought to work like sights on a rifle, making every sprint count. Scientists now think a cat's markings and colors are more than fur deep. 
They are also tattooed on their skin. So in theory, if you took away their fur, they'd still be able to blend into their surroundings. There is, however, an unusual big cat that stands out from the rest. There's only one population left, and they live in Timbavati, South Africa. Come on! <laughs> Let's go! These are white lions. They range from pale white to blonde because of a genetic mutation not found anywhere else in Africa. A white lion is a very unique animal. They've got a re recessive gene, which means that they're not albino. They've originated from this area, but how it originated, uh, you know, no one really knows. For a long time, their light colouring was thought to be a disadvantage when hunting. Experts now believe this isn't the case. There is absolutely no difference between a white lion and a tawny lion or a brown lion. No difference whatsoever. Their hunting habits, the manner, the way they can see, their sight, you know, the aggression, uh, the friendliness, you know, it's all exactly the same. There's no difference between the two. Just the colour of their skin. Come on! Because of their unique colour, white lions are highly prized by hunters. Hello, my girls. West Matthewson rescued these two sisters when they were five days old. The lions are eight months old now and um, nearly nine months. Monty, take them this way, boy. Come on. They are well and truly part of the family. This way. Come on, girls. Come on. Come on. There's a good dog. You bring them along. Every day he takes you them out them with along. his dogs. <laughs> you bring them along. Hey, my girl, you're the most beautiful thing. Hey. <laughs> they love going for a walk. They absolutely love it. Get out of the house environment and play with the lions. And I mean, look at that in the bush. They just love it. Monty, come here. Come here. The relationship between man's best friend and the king of the jungle is not how you might imagine. Monty, come here, come here, girls, come on. Because they were brought up with these lions since they were five days old. So the dogs were interacting with them all along. And um, the little Jack Russell, he's very aggressive. So when the lions want to play with him, he jumps up and he gives them a nip and they don't like that. <laughs> you see, the lions won't play with, with him at all. But with a lab, they want to play, they'll play with him all day. White lions are one of the rarest cats on the planet. There are only 13 left in the wild. West is aware that time is running out for them and all lions. You take a look at the Barbary lion in Morocco, that's gone off the face of the earth, it's history. So it's a passion that I've got to try and get the word out there you know, to try and save these, these magnificent animals. And that's exactly why um, I've got these lines and Come to on. do what I'm doing, to try and educate people and make them realize um, what wonderful animals they are. <laughs> They're amazing. They're incredibly affectionate. We love your neck to be scratched, eh? Unlike other cats, lions live in groups and love company. But why are they the only truly social big cat? All cats have a lot in common, including the need to have their own territory. Like us, 
It's all about location, location, location. Finding a home that's got everything they need. But unlike us, cats can't lock up their homes. Instead, they must mark their patch as often as they can, with scent. They use different methods to let everyone know what's theirs. From scratching, to spraying. A cat's sense of smell is about 14 times more sensitive than ours. Recent discoveries show that scent marking even allows cats to share territory. A quick sniff can tell them who is in the area, when they were last here, and when they might return. This way, cats rarely meet, and turf wars can be avoided. Using smells to mark territory is something our cats do as well. It's the reason your new sofa is always in the firing line. Like big cats, they have scent glands all over their bodies, including their paws. So whenever they scratch or rub, strong smelling pheromones are released, marking your sofa as theirs. If you have two cats, they'll have to scent mark even more because the strongest smell controls the area. In Africa, one big cat is also very vocal about its territory. Male lions roar every day to make the boundaries of their patch loud and clear. Strengthened vocal cords make them the loudest big cat. And calls can travel for over five miles. boy! Lion expert Kevin Richardson has been researching lion calls. He's found out how they react to roars in their territory. They're very astute in listening very carefully. And you'll hear, as soon as lions roar in this park, they all listen and, uh, uh, okay, I know who those lions are. We've done experiments where we've played them familiar roars, or they're the, the lions that they're used to. A big male lion doesn't even react because he knows it's his that he knows where they are he knows that they're not a threat play him an unfamiliar roar and suddenly he's you can see his hair bristle and if it's a one male lion he's after it like a shot he goes in the direction of that sound but if you play three roars unfamiliar he's very quiet and suddenly he goes in a, a kind of a banana to maybe avoid them so it's very interesting roaring. We're still learning a lot about it. Cats are divided into roarers and purrers. No cat can do both. Bigger cats like jaguars, tigers and lions roar. Whereas smaller cats like cheetah, serval, and domestic cats purr. Purrs can be used to communicate. 
they are thought to convey that a cat is content. They are made by vocal cords vibrating at up to 150 times per second. The sound reverberates through their bodies. Recent studies have shown the constant vibrations strengthen bones and even help to repair fractures. But purrs can't roar to protect their territory. Keeping their patch comes down to walking the beat. This is a caracal. It's only twice the size of a domestic cat, but its home range can be the size of 500 football pitches. This female is on her daily patrol and keeping an ear out for her next meal. Caracals have specialized ears that can hear prey from over a mile away. Her sand-colored fur means she completely blends into her surroundings. Caracal hearing is so acute that when birds fly towards her, she can catch them without looking. It's an incredible ability that our cats have as well. Which helps explain their super quick reflexes. But while a domestic cat can leap over a meter high, caracals easily double that. Launching to over three meters from a sitting start. Caracals were used as bird catchers in ancient India. Legend has it, they inspired the phrase, put the cat amongst the pigeons. Caracals are not the only felines that have given our cats extraordinary hunting skills. Domestic cats share some incredible abilities with their big cat relatives, including climbing, camouflage, and agility. But the biggest thing they have in common is a killer instinct. Western Brazil is home to a cat that shares your Moggy's lethal bite. This is the Pantanal, a wetlands where up to three quarters of the land can be submerged in the rainy season, supporting a huge array of wildlife. and the most powerful cat in existence.
They can be the same size as a lion, but they have twice the bite force. This is the jaguar. Shorter jaws give it leverage when biting, and a unique arrangement of muscles mean it has the biggest bite of any cat. It uses this power to eat the unthinkable. Three meter long caiman. Your cat has more in common with a jaguar than you think. Taking a closer look at feeding time reveals the big cat within. Your cat prefers its food to be 38 degrees Celsius, roughly the same temperature its prey would be in the wild. Like a jaguar, they have long incisors at the front of their mouth. These teeth are used to break up food, but they aren't designed to chew. Cat stomach acid is strong enough to digest lumps of raw meat. It can even destroy bacteria like Salmonella and E. coli. The cat's cast iron stomach is pushed to its limits in the wild. Tigers hide kills in bushes and keep feeding on them even as they rot. This tigress has a unique hiding place for leftovers. She left this rib cage here several days ago. Even though it is teeming with bacteria, it's still perfectly safe for her and her two cubs to eat. Before she feeds them, there's more hiding to do. Burying meat in the reeds makes her cubs search for their dinner, getting them used to tracking prey. It's a vital lesson in wild cat training. Hiding food like a tiger is a behavior you might have seen a bit closer to home. Our cats also want to teach their young to hunt. Using their prey as a learning toy. Even if they don't have young, scientists believe they'll keep returning with prey to teach you a thing or two about hunting. Domestic cats are such successful predators, they catch over 80 million mice in Britain every year. But the biggest cat in Africa could give them a masterclass in hunting. Lions hunt over a dozen different animals in the African savannah. 
even targeting prey weighing up to 300 kilograms. They can do this because unlike other cats, they hunt as a team. Female lions do most of the hunting and they organize themselves with military precision. First, they sneak in on their target, fanning out into a circle. At the front is a chaser. They split up the herd and push them towards the others. Sometimes up to 30 Pride members will be involved in a hunt. But even if they're not, everyone gets to share in the meal. This inclusive behavior is something that's unique to lions. Lion whisperer Kevin Richardson thinks hunting as a group may be one of the reasons lions evolved to be social. Obviously there's advantages to, to being social in terms of having tenure over territories, having the ability to hunt as a group and bring down larger prey to feed the group, having almost sentinels that stand back and look out for, for danger or look after the, the, the cubs in a crash. There's definitely um, reasons why lions became social on the evolution scale. But why that exactly happened, people still don't know. You know, it could be something as simple as a solution to a particular problem at a particular time in a particular area. And that's, and that, you know, gave rise to that and it simply worked for them so it was carried over. Whereas that hasn't been the case for other big cat species or other cat species for that matter because lions are the only truly social cat. While most cats are loners, exciting new studies show this may be changing. In Costa Rica, jaguars that are normally solitary are surprising experts by sharing food. They're not blood relatives, but are still learning to get along. Who's a good boy? Thank you. Getting close to lions has taught Kevin that even when cats are more social, they're still individuals. When you start to work with 33 lions, then you can imagine working with 33 people. And imagine some of those 33 people, you're not gonna let your guard down because they are what I would call an acquaintance. So although you've got a, a, a good relationship business-wise, it's not the same as a good friendship. And I have family lions, friend lions, um, business associate lines, etc. And that's just life. You're not going to have the same bonds with every person you meet. Like you're not going to have the same bonds with every line you meet. <laughs> Whether your cat is an acquaintance, a business associate, or a best friend, Kevin has some advice for you. There's differences in characters, and that's what I encourage people to see. Get to know the characters. You'll see amazing individuals. It's not just lionesses and male lions. Just like in all the other animals, they've all got different little um, quirks and characters that are really interesting. 
every cat has their own unique personality. But they all share some incredible abilities. From gravity-defying agility to super senses. Ingenious camouflage and unimaginable strength. A lot of these amazing skills have been passed down to our humble cats. The latest and arguably the greatest member of the cat family. Next time, we discover how wild cats came to live in our homes and what makes them the world's most popular pet. Is it purely down to cute looks? Or is there more to our moggies than meets the eye? And the story of cats continues at the same time next week. From the creator of Downton Abbey comes a brand new three-part drama here on ITV. Tom Hollander stars in Dr. Thorne next. And Davina's adventures continue tomorrow night at nine with a dip in the Atlantic Ocean, where she comes face to face with the creatures of the deep in life at the extreme. <laughs>